Hey guys, with the recent popularity of my Polar Star Kythera install video for the M4, I thought it might be a good idea to show you exactly how I managed to fit the Kythera into an AUG. Now, if you're not aware, compared to a basic install into something like a simple V2 gearbox inside of an M4 platform, installing one of these into a V3 gearbox, specifically for an AUG, took some much expected modifications in order to make everything fit and shoot correctly. If you're wondering how the Kythera works or how to install it into a regular V2 gearbox like for an M4, you can check out my first video on the Kythera in the video description. If you're wondering why I chose to convert an AUG and not some other bullpup, and believe me, I put an extensive amount of time looking into every option I had available, it's mostly because the AUG actually offered me the simplest install compared to other bullpups. With practice, getting to the gearbox takes less time than any M4 platform. Now, of course, as you can probably already see, I've already modified this AUG, but I will take you guys through this step by step. Maybe you've got your own AUG you wish to modify, or maybe you're just wondering how I did it. If you're looking to do this to your AUG, you will need a specific nozzle available from Polar Star. I'll provide a link in the video description. All right, let's jump into this. First off, you're gonna wanna take the butt pad off your AUG. Just get right in there, guys. This sucker likes to keep itself right on there, but you go ahead and show it who's boss. All right, it's a little dark in here. Let me try and shine a light for you guys. As you can see, we just gotta take these two little screws out which keep the gearbox plate in place preventing our gearbox from bouncing around or falling out. Not gonna lie guys, getting to the gearbox in an AUG is such an easy task, it's laughable. I will say my gearbox has obviously been modified since I got it, so don't be surprised if your gearbox is a little tighter the first time you try and slide it out the back. You might have to give your AUG a light spanking like I did the first time around. You can see here I've got to be mindful of the grip line for my air. Both the grip line and the gearbox have to come out horizontally at the same time. None of that means sh though because this is what you really got to watch out for. This is the springy thingy for your double sided dust cover which gives you access to your hop up from either side. This guy could fly off and kill somebody so be careful. Give some light finger pressure while pulling out. I need to watch what I say. Oh! Oh, uh... Yeah, that's not what you want to happen. It's okay. It's okay. I found it. Alright guys, here's the gearbox. You'll notice there's way less going on here than a basic AUG gearbox. Here's a picture of a regular gearbox on the left, and mine on the right. All the little wires can be taken off, as well as the housing for the motor. This gives me free range of motion for the grip line, as well as a much easier time taking the gearbox in and out of the AUG since it's way less of a tighter fit. Remember, that plate we took out with those two screws is what holds the gearbox firmly in place. Nothing else matters. You guys know how this works. Speed run the gearbox opening. It's even easier now that it's like four or five screws for this gearbox compared to the V2's 19 screws holding everything together. I kept this little black plastic piece behind the trigger. It doesn't do anything. It just covers a gap and softly holds the two pieces together when there's no screws in place. You might want to keep it. Okay guys, so this is where the modifications come into play. Hopefully you can see this, but I've actually sawed off a little pin that protrudes outwards. I think it used to hold a gear or something, but if it were still there, it would pretty much be right above the trigger. You can't miss it. The problem with that little piece is that it completely gets in the way of the version 3 Kythera's firing mechanism. The thing wouldn't budge when interacting with the trigger because that stupid little pin was sitting there all proud like some real asshole. Try and imagine this little screw is that pin. So yeah, it was super in the way. You gotta saw that mofo off as soon as possible. Clean off any metal dust and place your Kythera down nice and flat. Okay, modification numero dos. This is why my Kythera install took me like five hours or some crazy amount of time. This takes patience. This step, you gotta be careful. Don't go all cray cray with some industrial grinder here, all right? In a bullpup system, you have two triggers. 
the trigger you pull with your finger, and then the trigger attached to the gearbox that gets pushed with a physical trigger bar between both triggers. Everything is all physically attached. I don't know what this piece is called, but it's like a little trigger block that the trigger inside the AUG gearbox interacts with. This trigger block will interact with your Kythera, not the trigger itself, like how it is in my M4. As you can hopefully see here, I'll pretend my finger is the trigger bar. I'll pull back the trigger. You'll see the trigger block is actually the key piece of the puzzle here doing all the work with the Kythera. The problem here is that the unmodified trigger block is just way too big. The Kythera's firing mechanism takes up too much space and the trigger block has no space to shift or rotate towards it. You're gonna see a little notch here, hopefully. Say hello. hello. You're gonna need to file this guy down quite a bit because you're going to notice the difference between yours and mine. Mine is much smaller than yours. I really need to watch what I say. File this little guy down until your trigger doesn't feel stiff anymore. I'm gonna get real close for you guys. This is tight. The space between this and this is real tight. You wanna shave this little guy down until there's just enough space there for it to sit and move. When I push the nozzle in and charge the Kythera, you'll see the firing mechanism move down and sit into place. With an unmodified trigger block, your Kythera won't be able to do this and it won't function. Side note here, if you shave down your trigger block and give less space than what I'm giving, you can actually turn your Kythera into a full auto engine. I'm pretty sure that's not healthy for it, but believe me when I say I should have recorded it because it sounded like my Kythera was a 25 RPS monster. I do not recommend, as cool as it sounds, for a semi-auto engine. <laughs> Back on topic, this is what you want. If you don't shave down your trigger block and put too much stress on your trigger bar, you might snap it. The trigger pull will be too heavy or just jammed altogether if you do nothing. Do not try to force a shot with a resistive trigger pull to test the gun. It should feel smooth and light when you're finished modifying the trigger block. Don't forget to test your trigger before putting it all back together as well. Moving on, for the charging cable, for those rare moments you need to reset your Kythera, I filed a half circle on one side of the gearbox. This gives me just enough space to run the cable out the back. This is actually better than how I currently have it in my M4, since the cable sits in a straight line and not at a 90 degree angle coming out through the grip. Finally, carefully drill yourself a hole in between the mag release and the back of your AUG along the seam. You got some stuff going on in there, so you want to make sure you don't go too far up where you drill that hole. Just ahead is where the mags go in, and just behind might be an unfavorable angle when taking the gearbox in and out with that hose. So I've got my charging cord coming out the back, and my grip line coming out through the bottom, and I've got my finger on that spring that likes to shoot out into the dark void. So let's go ahead and put this thing back into my AUG. This is the easy part. Both the grip line and the gearbox slide in horizontally. We just gotta get the head of the grip line through our newly drilled hole and the rest is easy. Just be patient. Find the hole, in we go, in we go. Two seconds, guys. In we go. Alrighty, back it out a bit. Turn the gearbox down. Ah, see what I mean? See what I mean? See what I mean? All right, look at that. Look at that. Oh, all right, just slide her in, push it in, push it in a bit. Just carefully slide it in there. We just gotta push it in, guys. Just push it in. Aha, there we go. Just be gentle. I think because we took the motor housing off, it's not that it's harder to slide it in now, it's just we gotta keep the top of the gearbox near the top of the inside of where it's supposed to be as we slide it in. A big indicator you're doing it right is that you'll see the dust cover sliding forward where they're supposed to be and not too low or something. So you'll notice I've drilled a hole in the gearbox plate. This is lined up with our gearbox half circle hole we made so that we can run the charging cable through it. That Way, whenever I need to access or use it, all I have to do is take the rubber butt pad off. That's it guys, 
all finished. The important thing about putting a Kythera into an AUG is making sure there's no stress on that trigger bar. The AUG trigger bar is pretty good to begin with, so we want to keep it that way. There's no stress on my trigger bar. The trigger is pretty damn responsive for a Kythera inside a bullpup, guys. To be honest, with that trigger block in place modified the way it is, my trigger response is already superb. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Installing a Kythera into a bullpup or any modifications for a bullpup in Airsoft can be tricky, but it's definitely doable. As always, I'll see you guys next time. Oh.